Hello, I'm Eddie Wu, and today I'm going to tell you three things about WuTube, the not quite flipped classroom, and you. I'm going to tell you what is WuTube, uh, what do I, why do I do it, and why should you consider doing something like it. So, number one, what is YouTube? Well, it's a unfortunately named YouTube channel. One of my ex students made it up the name, and it stuck, and I have not thought of a better one since where I upload just my classroom lessons. I set up a camera and some lights and a microphone and hit play. And then my regular lesson unfolds. Now, what is the flipped classroom? Can I get a show of hands? How many of you have heard of Khan Academy? Yeah, okay, excellent. Thank you, hands down. Now, the flipped classroom, for those of you who either been living under a rock or raised your hand out of peer pressure, <laughs> is, <laughs> I know you're there, I do it too. The idea of the flipped classroom is taking what happens normally in a class, which is instruction and explanation, and flipping around from what usually happens at home, which is exercises and aptly named homework. Right? So it's, it's turning it the other way around. Khan Academy does it with this kind of video. There's writing on the video, and there's a soothing voice in the background explaining what's going on. Now, I call WooTube the not quite flipped classroom because I do not do this. I do this. It's just my regular lesson. Now, I do that for two reasons. Number one, I don't have time to pre-record videos beforehand during summer. I have three young children and they keep me very busy. So, instead, I just do it during my lesson. But secondly, the reason why I don't do the pre-recording thing is because I think one of the best things that you all have to experience in maths teaching is the learning moment. The learning moment. When you're there and you are exploring a weird, crazy, counterintuitive idea complete with you know, questioning and perplexity and apparently lots of arm waving, right? That moment, that moment, I think you're crazy to rob yourself of, that, of doing that in a classroom with your students, okay? So that's why I do it that way. But why do I do it? Right, let me give you four reasons. Number one, short form video of the kind that YouTube has made famous is the medium of our students' generation. And it's not just them. We as teachers, we know this. You don't stand up there and talk and talk and talk. You've got to do bits of explanation, bit of an example, let them have a go. Don't keep them wrapped from actually doing the maths. You do it in short pieces. Of course, there are times for extended discourses, but you know, gone are the days, really, of the 40-minute doco <laughs> on the VHS. Instead, long live the 8 to 10-minute video from Crash Course, Veritasium, Vsauce, those kinds of guys. That was reason number one. Reason number two, I just wanted to create some free Australian resources out there. Uh, whether we like it or not, our students are going to the internet for help. And they're finding, you know, on Google you look for what, but on YouTube you find how. But most of the how is US, right? And so kids get up there and they're like, what's arc sign? Do I do pre-calculus? I don't know, I've never heard of it. So we need a lot of free Australian stuff out there for students to access. And number three, to enable me to be more flexible with that precious time that I have in class. Okay, here's the idea. Just like in the kitchen, the mathematics classroom is filled with exploration and inquiry and perplexity, right? But it's also filled with algorithms, step-by-step -step processes that must be mastered by practice and there is no other way. Now, please tell me I'm not the only maths teacher who has spent lesson after lesson explaining something and then madly running around, sorry, I keep <laughs> madly running around to all these individual tables to help students through how do I do the quadratic formula? How do it's completing the square? I don't get it, right? So you sit down in them and you help them, but you can only do that for so long. And unfortunately, we don't usually have two chefs in the classroom, right? So that enables me to use the, the time I have in class more freely, okay? Last reason why I do it, the school I used to teach at was literally famous for its academic excellence. Um, but the thing that astonished me most about it was that all the students were so involved in extracurricular activities. Cadets, musical, SRC, prefects, social justice, you name it. They're all great things, but they take up time. Now I really resented the idea that our students were being inadvertently punished academically for pursuing these great kinds of initiatives because they lose lessons, right? So the video is a kind of a way for them to catch up the lessons that they've missed. And as uh, was mentioned before, the, the sequential nature, nature of maths means that's really essential. Okay. Now just one little um, PS to why I do it in this reason. Does anyone, hands up, does anyone recognize what that building is? Anyone? Okay, you are all very fortunate uh, because 
This building, well, this, this is the front door of the Children's Hospital at Westmead. Now, you are all fortunate to not recognise it. <coughs> but our children, our students are not also fortunate. A couple of years ago, I had a very, very um, uh, moving experience. I had the privilege of teaching a student who was very, very ill in that hospital all the time. And if you know anyone who's been very ill, one of the things you crave the most is just to feel normal, just to do normal things, not to have life be appointment after appointment after treatment after recovery. The boy I taught was able to keep up with the class and when he was in class for a few weeks at a time, it wasn't like he was just sort of dead weight dragging the class down because he'd been keeping up with us. So that was one of the really important reasons why I did this. That was four reasons why I do it. Why should you do it? Well, if your lecturers are still talking about the importance of reflection as much as they did when I was at university, <laughs> then you all know how important it is to actively and objectively critique your own pedagogy. Right? Well, I can tell you, nothing is as objective as a camera. Okay? <laughs> so, wow, right? Number two, to give yourself a sense of progress as a teacher. Right? Those first few years where you're just struggling to work out how to do anything, they can be brutal. Right? Uh, some people are you know, naturals and they just walk into the classroom and they're awesome, but the rest of us mere mortals, we need a reminder of the fact that we're, we're growing as teachers. Right? And that might not be obvious day to day, it's certainly not obvious period one to six, but over a period of years, you can see yourself change, and that's really amazing. Thirdly, to be part of the global movement that's sharing education for free with the whole world. Now, I went to, into teaching because we live in a country where you can get world-class education for free, and things like YouTube EDU are trying to do that en masse through the internet. Uh, places like Socratic.org call it crowd teaching, uh, which, like crowdsourcing, is making all kinds of new things possible through the internet. One last reason. Why should you do it? Why should you consider doing something as crazy as sticking a camera in your classroom? Well, it's to challenge yourself. Uh, to provide the most innovative and um, clear explanations, explanations that you can, right? Uh, it's scary having it there, but it'll push you to, true, to do the best lessons that are possible. Thanks.